Can I ask you, um, I should have looked you up probably, but did you follow in your father's footsteps or? No, I went into politics. You went into <laughs> politics, but did you decide you didn't want to go into That's sailing from what you'd done? Or? Okay, I tell you, I, I, I did quite a lot of sailing. I think um, he, he would have been amazed at the amount of sailing I did uh, after he died because he left me with the, the next boat. Uh, I should say there was a Gypsy Moth 5, which was the sixth Gypsy Moth, um, and uh, which he went in for another adventure after this round the world trip. And um, I, I was left with this beautiful boat, and she was beautiful. And so I, I sailed her a bit and, and plucked up my courage and went further afield and learned navigation in Sexton. The, the thrills of saying, after you cross the ocean, well, in, in an hour and a half we should see a light over there, and, and thank God we did. Um, that's, that, that, so uh, yes, I got the boat. Um, and I, I, um, I like to say I sailed across the Atlantic seven and a half times. Of course, the story is in the half. Uh, I was with someone else in their boat, I'd like to make clear. Uh, the mast fell down and we were getting on for in the middle of the Atlantic and so it was a bit um, awkward but uh, we rigged up a jury sail and, and sailed back. It took us 14 days to sail back what we'd taken six days to sail out. So I had, um, and I've sailed across the Southern Ocean from Cape Town to Fremantle. So I've, I, I reckon that there was a five-year period in which I think I spent one year at sea. So I did a lot of sailing, but none of it was single-handed or, you know, doing something for the first time or anything like that. I thought it was quite a big deal myself, but uh, it, was, it was not that much out of the ordinary. And uh, I now count myself very lucky to have had that time because I, I, my desires after uh, giving up politics to Buy a, build a boat, buy a boat, no, buy a boat and, and go on a few trips uh, is not going to come to pass. I've, um, Anno Domini has uh, fixed me up and I realise I'm not quite, not quite as strong as I was 40 years ago. But um, uh, you can't compete with your father who's a world leader in effect. No, no point in trying. Um, so I, I, I stuck to my early ambition and went into politics. Thank you. For my sins. Someone. <laughs> well, was there much change when you came back after sailing around the world? You know, no. Something? no. Well, I didn't think so. <laughs> um, uh, no, I didn't think so. No. No, you haven't gone potty or anything like that. <laughs> Some of them did yeah. or do. Um, because of the, the loneliness. But in his case, I think uh, maturity helped. It, being older, um, you're, you're less prone to the anxieties of the flesh, of one sort or another. Um, and you're incredibly busy. I mean, you, you, you're, you're living a 24 hour life. You're sailing the boat, you had to keep changing the sails and adjusting to the changed condition. One, you have to navigate, that takes you an hour or two a day, at least, um, because you've got to take the sights and reduce them and work them out and so on. Um, he took quite a lot of time, more or less every day, on the radio telephone, trying to contact the shore and then make his report. Um, you've got to cook for yourself. You've got to try and get some rest sometimes. And you've got to repair things that go wrong. So you're pretty busy. Um, now, if you want to, you can, you can uh, brood on the fact that you're stuck uh, several hundred miles from anywhere, and no chance of nipping around the corner shop for something if you missed it. But um, being busy is the main uh, salvation.